Sometimes I wonder as I go spray lawns and I'm spraying a combination of different chemicals on the lawn, am I using the right chemicals? Am I using too many, too not enough? Which ones could I leave out and still get the same results? I wanna to talk to you a little bit about some things you can consider if that's your situation, if those things ever go through your mind. And I wanna to talk to you about some questions you can ask yourself to maybe narrow down which chemicals you should use and when to use them. Today's video is sponsored by Yardbook. I've been using Yardbook for my lawn care business since 2015. Great software. If you need a user-friendly software to run your lawn care business, go to yardbook.com and sign up for a free account. So let me talk to you a little bit about where these thoughts even came from. I was out here spraying my yard the other day and I've been spraying my customers' lawns. We start in January spraying pre and post-emergent combination on our lawns here in Alabama where I live. So here's my lawn. This is the backyard and we plugged this with sod. This was all actually woods when we brought the, bought the property. When I say woods, I'm not talking about nice, pretty, beautiful woods that you can stroll through. I'm talking about nasty, Chinese privet and all kind of just disgusting briars and swampy looking stuff. And so we transformed it into this. Well, one of the things I was noticing is out here spraying this and spraying other lawns. I'm like, you know, I'm out here spraying. I've got a pre-emergent in here, two post-emergent surfactant, and I really don't see any weeds in the lawn. Matter of fact, I got two pre-emergents, two post-emergent surfactant, and there's almost no weeds. So like, what if I left the product out? Would it still work as well as it did with all these products? Well, instead of just thinking about that, I'm actually put the theory to the test. So what I did, I took my machine and I sprayed this back area in my yard with my combination. I'm gonna show you the products I was using. And I'm gonna tell you what I did different on the front yard. And then we'll get to some thinking behind it to hopefully help you understand why you're putting the right products on the lawn, which products could you leave out, and you know, just help you think through the questions to know what to do, when to do it. All right, so I've got some of my products out that I've been spraying on the yard. I'm gonna tell you what I'm spraying. I'm gonna tell you, in my opinion, kind of the order, the importance of these, and which products are doing what to the lawn, and which ones I think I might could leave out and still get the same results. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. All right, so here's the products. This is. This is a pre-emergent, so this is Resolute 4FL. This is Prodiamine. So this is what I'm putting out before the crabgrass germinates to help keep the crabgrass out. That's the main uh, strategy with that. This is a spectacle flow. I often use it in the fall to get ahead of cool season weeds like Poa annua. But this year, I actually put three ounces in with my round one mix to help if there is some Poa annua that's going to germinate like in February or March time frame. I'm hoping it's going to help out with that. This is Atrazine. It is a restricted use pesticide. It is to help with some broadleaf weeds. Uh, this is triplet. Also, uh, it, this is a three-way um, product is gonna help with some broadleaf weeds as well. And this is my surfactant. So with these products, okay, when I'm doing my round one treatment here early in the year, I definitely want the prodiamine here. Not that expensive and gonna do a great job on keeping the crabgrass out of the lawn. The spectacle flow, I'm kind of debating on it, honestly. I, I put it out in the fall, seen a little bit of POA breakthrough, not much. And I, I've been using it the past few years, like in April or May timeframe, which helps big time with Kalinga, Doveweed, things like that. Using it now, I'm wondering if I missed out on those three ounces, how much POA would actually germinate in February or March? You know, would my fall application of spectral keep it out or is this extra three ounces I'm doing now really making a difference? I don't know the answer to that, but I'd love to hear from you if you know the answer. So definitely need this, okay? This is gonna be great on crabgrass better than this in my uh, understanding. So this might help with some late POA and then also carry on through and hopefully keep out some of the spring weeds that are gonna start germinating. So this combination double pre-emergent definitely want this one in there i'm not 100 sure on this but think it's helpful atrazine gonna help with like hen bent clover and some of those type of weeds but sometimes i wonder if i left the atrazine out would the triplet do almost as good uh, just by itself so triplet's going to do good on those broadleaf weeds as, as well as uh, you know those weeds i mentioned plus like dandelions and things like that so here's what I did on my lawn. I sprayed all of this on my lawn, all of it on the back part back here, all of this, everything and that. It all came in there, surfactant, triplet, atrazine, spectacle flow, resolute, everything. But as I'm spraying, you know, there's not that many weeds, but so that comes to my mind, I'm like, do I need to really be spraying all these stuff if there's not hardly any weeds in the yard? I mean, my fall pre-emergent did such a great job. Could I just put down the prodiamine and be fine? Well. 
I think here's the way I would think of it as me. For me, as a business owner, I'm using that combination because yes, they look good, but I wanna keep them looking good. But it's on my own yard, I can experiment a little bit. So what I did on the rest of my yard, which is pretty big, I didn't use all those products. I just put the prodiamine down. Prodiamine only, no post-emergent weed killer. Meaning, if there's any weeds out there, the prodiamine did not kill them. And it's basically just gonna be there to, to get ahead of those warm season weeds that haven't germinated yet. Now, is that okay to do that? Well, of course it's okay to do that. And on my yard, it, it doesn't matter that much to me because I can always go back and spray a post-emerge on it later. But I'm wondering, I just really wanted to see the difference. So I'm gonna uh, testing here in my mind, making mental notes, spraying all of this with that big combination I just showed you and the rest of my yard spraying it with just the prodiamine. I wanna see the difference. So a few questions you might ask yourself if you're trying to get by with a little bit cheaper combination. One question you might ask yourself is, when am I coming back to spray a post-emergent product again? And so for my situation, for my customer's lawns, I'm planning on spraying this combination. And I think this year I'm gonna be back in March spraying a little bit more spectacle with some Dismiss, with some Metsulfuron. So my thinking is, you know, let's just say that there were some weeds out there and I missed, I'm gonna be back in March to spray again. And I think by March, they're not gonna be that big and very noticeable on the lawn again. So I got another chance to come back and get them. Now, again, I'm not doing it on my customer's yards. I'm trying to keep those looking great and take care of them, but I'll be interested to see are more weeds popping up on the other side of my yard where I only use the prodiamine. Along those same lines of thinking, and this is why I, I wanna uh, catch myself a little bit because you might not see the weeds in the yard, okay? Like the rest of my yard, which is uh, maybe two or three more acres of Bermuda grass, I might not see the weeds, and I've been noticing since I spray some customer's yards, but sometimes there are weeds that are very, very small. I've seen a couple of yards that had POA on it, but it was really, really small POA. Well, fast forward to March, that POA is not gonna be so small again. Now, the stuff I'm spraying right now is gonna take care of the POA, I'm gonna have to do something else about that. But uh, other little small broadleaf weeds, when we get some warm days in March, become big broadleaf weeds that are unsightly, it doesn't look that good. So if you're gonna go the cheaper route and just go just pre-emergent, then I think what you need to do is make sure that you understand that your yard sure enough is clean and doesn't just look clean. Cause I mean, some ugly yards will look clean this time of year. I'm, I'm filming this in January, but you fast forward a month from now, they don't look as clean because those weeds are starting to grow. So if it's gotta be really clean to get by with just the pre-emergent application, at least where I live. And again, I can get away with it on my yard because I'm gonna be back spraying pre and post-emergent again, just two months from now. I wanna give you one more example of how I'm thinking through of like which products to add in there and if is it gonna make a difference or not make a difference. So in this situation, I wanna to talk to you about a different product, it's called Dismiss. The active ingredient is sulfentrazone. So this is Dismiss right here. So what I'm planning on doing this, this year, I'm, I've told you I'm spraying around one. Round two, let's see how I come back in March. And we still got mostly dormant Bermuda grass out here. And what I want to do is use a high rate of dismiss to just get ahead of these sedges. It's supposed to be great on sedges. I mean, I've used it before, okay? A lot of products had dismiss in it, but uh, what's been said is if you can use it in the spring, okay, this is what the FMC people say, I believe. If you can use it in the spring, you can get a, a real good uh, activity on your sedges that's gonna help you big time. Okay, well, what I've been doing is using Spectacle Flow in the spring the last couple of years, and it's been working great on the Kalinga and helping with broadleaf weeds and things like that. Well, I'm wondering, well, there's a couple things here. One, the Spectacle Flow, significantly more expensive. The Dismiss was like super cheap this fall, so I bought a bunch of it. And I know it works, okay, I, I know it works. I've sprayed on my yard, I mean, it is great on sedge. It's gonna be better on your yellow nut sedge and Kalinga, but it's, it's get some really good activity. Now, the downside of Dismiss products is they can cause some 
burn to the turf, okay? So I'm picturing in my head last year a yard I sprayed. It's just loaded with Kalinga, doesn't drain well. And I don't usually put Dismiss in there with my, my mixture, but on this yard, I thought this yard is loaded with Kalinga. So I went ahead and put it in my ride-on spreader sprayer. And I thought, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna blast this yard with Sulfitrazone to see if I can get this Kalinga under control. Well, I did. Uh, it was actually a relative's yard. I went back and looked at it, and where I had the tire tracks on my right on spreader sprayer, it left brown streaks in the yard. Now, it's early in the morning, there's dew on the ground. I, I've heard a little bit about dew, might not do as great with it. Uh, a lot of things could have happened that caused that. So what I'm thinking is, and, and people know that this mist can cause some burn, but it doesn't always cause burn. I've sprayed in my yard and be be perfectly fine. It just, just whatever happened, circumstances, uh, it, it made some brown streaks in the yard on this. Now, it did a great job controlling the sedges. So what I'm wanting to do, and I'd love to hear somebody else have some suggestions on this, what I'm thinking of doing, um, ideally, probably better put this out in uh, April 15th to May 15th is what someone told me that's familiar with the product, a, a rep for the manufacturer rep. But I'm thinking for my situation, and the manufacturer rep thought this was also a pretty good idea, said, I said, what if I put it out in, in March? And the reason I'm saying March is because the grass is going to be still mostly brown then, or dormant Bermuda. And so if I did it in March, and, I, and I'm using a high rate 12 ounces per acre, I'm mean, gonna get some activity and, and it may not last quite as long into the summer, but I wouldn't be as concerned about causing some discoloration to the turf in March. And he said, yeah, I like that idea. So I know somebody does that and, and they get good results. It works great. And so that's what I think about doing. I think about doing that exact thing. But now that brings me to the question about which chemicals you use, which one to leave out. If I knew right now that 12 ounces of dismiss in March would just absolutely dominate my sedges, and I've already put three ounces of spectacle out in January, and I put six ounces out in the fall, then I might leave out three more ounces of spectacle in March, which is what I'm planning on doing. I'm planning on putting three ounces of this, and then 12 ounces of dismiss, and then some metzulfuron, which can help with the broadleaf weeds. But I don't know that. If you know that, I'd love to hear that. So I'm, I, if I knew that this alone would do it, then I don't want to do that, okay? Because I know this works, but this is a lot cheaper. And anyway, so you, you get what I'm saying. Sometimes when you're spraying yards, you know that you got good results, but you don't exactly know which product it is. So like I'm wondering right now if I'm spraying, you know, like I said earlier, if I left atrazine out, would I still kill almost all the broadleaf weeds? What am I getting extra by using the atrazine that the triplet wouldn't do by itself? And I don't always know the answer to that, okay? It's not an expensive product, you know, it is restricted use, so you, you know, not available for homeowners, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, most of these products are available for homeowners, by the way. So if you have some thoughts on this, I'm just telling you how I'm thinking through it. Understand when I'm going to come back and spray again. Are there small weeds I can't see? Which products are sure enough need to have happen right now? Like right now, I need the prodiamine down to get ahead of the crabgrass. Um, but which ones could I possibly leave out and still be very, very effective? Guys, the 2024 Lawn Care Life Conference is fast approaching. February 23rd, 24th. It is going great before it's even happened. We picked up more sponsors uh, this week. Just got a, a shipment of Milwaukee tools that we're giving away. We got Chris as a sponsor. We got Ferris as a sponsor bringing equipment. Xmark jumped on board this week as a sponsor. They're giving away a commercial X push mower, $2,599 value. We got a lot of things going on. We got a landscaping bookkeeper as a sponsor. Yard book as a sponsor. Uh, and people are signing up. So really excited about the conference. If you haven't signed up yet, go ahead and do so. Go to LawnCareLife.com, click on the conference link. It's got all the details, February 23rd and 24th. It's a Friday night and Saturday, $229. That includes all your meals. It's near Birmingham, Alabama at a facility called Matthews Manor. And if you go to register, if you register more than one person, you'll save 10%. And you can save an additional 10%, whether it's one person or 20 people, by using the code 2024. Just put 2024 in there. It's going to take 10% off. Register more than one person. Going to take another 10% off. Hope to see a lot of you there. If you want to get in weed control and fertilization like me and understand what I'm talking about today and you want to start as a business, then go to LawnCareLife.com and check out the Weed Control and Fertilization Academy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.